State is the essential new feature of our new curly language, but we don't have to use state at the plate language to implement it because you have to use state when you don't control all the channels of communication. But we're writing the interpreter. We control all of the code for the interpreter, so we control all the channels of communication. And that means we can implement boxes at the curly level by, at the plate level, passing along all of the relevant information. Let me show you what I mean by the relevant inf information. When uh, the curly program creates a, a new box 7, then there starts out to be some notion of memory, and allocating the box 7 will, in some cell of this memory, put the, the value 7. Right? So what we have to do is communicate from the, the interpret of box 7 to the rest of the program that memory has changed from being totally empty here to having one space allocated with a 7 in it. Similarly, when there's a set box, we communicate to the interpreter the current picture of memory, which maybe has a 7 at the, at the cell for B, and then as the interpreter does a set box, it produces this new view of memory, which it communicates to the rest of the program's interpretation, so that if there's an unbox, then it knows to get the 10 out of the box, because it's, it has received this communication of the memory picture. And by communication, I mean arguments to interp and results of interp. Currently, our interp takes an expression and produces a value. But now we have this extra piece of information, this view of memory, that needs to go into terp as an argument. So that means our interp function, instead of taking an expression and an environment, will take an expression, environment, and a store. Store is our data type that will represent this picture of memory. Right? Uh, it boils down to a list of cells where every cell has an address and a value inside the cell. I haven't shown the addresses in the pictures, I've just been showing the, the value, but we could count the boxes here and call this uh, 13 or something like that. So that's a, an argument that goes into interp to, to produce uh, uh, so that it can look at it, but interp also may do a set box or something that affects memory. And that means its result, in addition to the value of the expression, needs to be the new view of memory, the new store. Uh, we can't just add a second result here. Um, arrows only have one thing to the right of them. Um, so in order to put this value together with, uh, with memory, we will need a new result data type, which is uh, just has one variant, v star s, which pairs a value together with a store. So it's a long way of saying we get two results out, or two, two, um, two things come back from the interp function as a result. Uh, one thing is the value, and the other thing is the store. We just pair them together. So now our uh, interpreter function is making explicit the channel of communication from the store coming in and the store coming out. We will need to uh, rearrange uh, pieces of our, of our interpreter where it calls interp itself. So it used to be that when we implemented a plus expression with the left and right expression, we would just call interp, we would get numbers back, and we add them up. We're going to have to rearrange these pieces now because every call to interp needs to get, as an argument, the current picture of memory, the current store. And as it does its work, as it evaluates the expression L, it returns a value for the L, but it's also going to return a new store. That new store is what we should use when we interpret the second expression, because when we evaluate two expressions, this one may have some effect that this one should see. That means that this store returned from the first interp will go in as an argument to the second call to interp. And that second call will, in addition to a value, also produce a potentially updated store. That updated store is going to be the result uh, along with the, the addition of the two arguments. That is, when you do the actual plus, it doesn't change the store. So after the actual plus, we just return the old store, uh, the store that we got back from evaluating the right-hand side of expression. Meanwhile, num plus, it's adding the two numbers that were the value components of those two calls to interpret. When we take this picture and put it in code form, it looks like this. The first call to interp, where the current store, we're going to use the variable stow for that. That'll be an argument to interp. And we just pass it along into uh, evaluating the left expression. We get back a result, which is a value and a store. We're going to use that value later. Meanwhile, we interpret the right expression using that store from the first call to interp for L. That interpretation on the right-hand side will give us a further updated store. This sto r here is the one that came back right here. Right? This is sto l, this is sto r. Sto r is the one that we're going to return along with the sum of the numbers v l and v r. Those were the two values that we got back from the recursive calls to interpret. Right? 
sorry, a single line before I turn into these uh, five lines in order to thread through the store through the interpret and the articles. Some new types go along with this. We are managing a store. A store is going to be a list of storage cells where each storage cell maps a location to a value. Right, so location means which of the little boxes in my picture of memory are we talking about? The value is the value in that little box. To uh, identify the little boxes, we'll do the usual thing. We'll use a number to represent the location. So when we allocate a new box, we will pick a fresh location uh, and say that that cell uh, at that location has the value that we put in the new box. Our store will only represent the cells that have something interesting in them. So when we start out, none of the cells have anything interesting in them. We'll just use an empty list to represent that. So I'll call that empty, sto empty store in the same way that we had empty env. Um, and when we allocate a cell or change a cell, we'll use override storage. It just cons onto our list of storage. So for example, if we want to represent this picture of memory, where there's nothing interesting except uh, this position right here has a 10 in it, then we would represent that by, let's say that's uh, cell number 13. Cell 13 has numv10, right, a capital V value in it. And that cell is added onto the otherwise empty store using override store. This is the plate value that represents this conceptual picture of memory. And since it's a plate value, now we can pass it into interp and get the results out of interp.